Uh, uh. Okay, hopefully that will work. Hey, Jade. Okay. My bad. I'm running out of space on my laptop. That's the problem. It's about to be time for a new laptop. Never about that. All right, y'all. So I'm going to get started and um, then we'll see who else jumps on. But let me get myself going here. All right. What is up, y'all? Welcome to High Performance at High Noon. Thank you for joining today's call. I am Judge Johnson, your work-life integration strategist. And this call happens every Wednesday at Noon Mountain Standard Time. That's 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, this calls for high performers. And we're going to talk about some things that help us continue to keep our high level of performance and excellence. Um, and then... I'm going to open it up for us Q&A. Oh, wait, wait one second. That was the other thing I was doing, fixing my internet. For some reason, CenturyLink is slow to get out here. So I was putting my own hotspot on. So give me one moment, y'all. Because ain't nobody got time for that. It interrupted my call this past weekend, too. Okay, give me one. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to switch over my internet so we don't have no problems because it was already giving me that your internet is unstable over here. So awesome. All right. So um, this uh, the reason why I started this call is because um, a lot of times people would ask me, Jice, how do you do all the things you do? And I would say with a lot of grace and work-life integration. And so I, I want to share a lot of the lessons that I've learned over the years and also, you know, experience um shared experience helps us. So this call does open up for Q&A. Um, and, you know, hopefully you will, um, if you're able to, you can join in the conversation. So today's call um, actually kind of branched off from a question that I was asked over the weekend. So I'll tell you about that question in a second, but I'm going to start back by talking about several years ago, um, I learned that like people are wildly adaptable, like the human the human species is adaptable, right? And when I talk about adaptability, like I really want to drive home just how adaptable we actually are. So I always like to look at something that we can make an easy reference to like an ant. An ant has not evolved. It still does what it does. It crawls, it goes for the food, it comes back, they build their little, um, you know, home under the earth or they build their mounds or where, whatever, whatever, however. Um, what you don't see is that ants have evolved to the space of talking, building out new things, creating anything, right? Like they just do what they do. And so humans essentially are the only species on the planet that have really adapted in the way and the format in which we um, are able to completely dominate um, the entire globe. And, you know, of course, if you're like Elon Musk or whatever, you might be trying to dominate outer space, but we are the only ones that do that. And so our adaptability matters a lot because a lot of times what happens with other species is that they're very hardwired the way that they are. So they're born, like you have, let's say a horse, for example, is born auto automatically knowing how to walk. Um, you have turtles that are born and automatically start migrating towards the sea, it's just something innate in them and this is what they do. Whereas a human can be born and without the development of each other, without that community, without essentially a mom or a dad or another person that has already evolved to a certain point, that child will literally just starve to death. You can have a bottle sitting right next to that baby and it will not be able to roll over. It will not be able to grab it. It will not know what to do with that that thing, right? And it can just lay there next to food and die. Um, and so that is because the vast majority of us as humans are programmed. So we have certain things programmed, like we come out, we know how to breathe, but then past that, everything that we do is wildly programmable and therefore it's also adaptable. Um, and we have the ability to adapt for the positive or for the negative. So one of the things that I learned when I was in Iraq is how easy it is for us to adapt, adapt to the negative. And I use that example all the time because for me, 
that was probably the first time that I realized how people are able to walk around in war zones like nothing is happening. I remember like bombs going off and me making a conscious decision that I am not getting up out the bed and going to the bunker because I'm tired and I just don't feel like it. And I'll just take my chances here in the bed. And, um, and so you can be in an active war zone. Like if you've never been to a war zone before, that sounds crazy. Like, oh, you heard a bomb, you go to the bunker. That's that's what you do. But I can guarantee you all over Iraq, all over war zones every day, people are not running, rushing or anything unless that bomb hit close to them. They can hear it and they will keep right on moving. They will hear it and keep going on with their meeting. They will hear it, keep going on with their phone call. They will hear it and keep walking to the store. Like they are not changing their life despite the fact that there is actual danger happening in their vicinity. And so we see that oftentimes growing up in the hood and other places like that, like you just adapt to what's happening in your space, good or bad, right? And so because of that, like that programming, what is kind of the, where things kind of hit the fan is when you have like an extreme trauma, right? Like we can adapt to, um, we can adapt to trauma and we can also be programmed into trauma. So for example, you touch the stove and it burns you because it's hot, that's not the same thing as adapting. That's a trauma and you are immediately programmed not to touch the stove again, right? So when that happens, for example, that programming is different than adaptability, but those two things can meet. So for example, you can touch the stove, that shit's hot, you bounce back, you are not gonna touch the stove again. Um, and now you have adapted in other ways to let's say, heat up your meals because you're scared of the stove uh, the stove so that trauma can really cause you to adapt in a way where you don't want to experience that trauma again so we can also adapt to goodness i talked about that a couple of weeks ago but most importantly what i think is is um, important in all of this is the concept of hedonic adaptation so i talked about this again a couple of weeks ago so i won't go down that whole road but essentially hedonic ad hedonic adaptation is when you get used to something so you can get used to positive things and you can also get used to negative things when you get used to negative things, like for example, if you are always yelling, like your partner, your spouse, um, I know for me, this was me with my daughter, like it got to the point where I would always yell. So I got no reaction out of her when I'm yelling um, because she can, you can adapt to that, right? So your partner is always yelling or your partner is always fussing. At some point, you don't hear that. But the same thing happens with sweetness or with goodness, right? Like your partner can always be looking out for you to the point where you just expect it and now you're not appreciative of it. I don't know what just happened there. How is somebody sharing the screen? How am I co-editing? What just took place? Give me one second, y'all. I have no idea why we're sharing. A whiteboard okay did everybody see that that was weird that was know. me i'm sorry i was trying to take notes and i think i did it wrong sorry no that's okay i didn't even know that you could share but all right um sorry fix that <laughs> <laughs> oh go ahead were you were you okay we're good okay i think we're good okay my bad so um Yes. So you can adapt to good and bad. That's ultimately what I wanted to drop there. So what can happen though is programming can help you heal from a trauma, right? So it can further a trauma or it can help you heal from a trauma. But the way that this happens, because when you talk about programming, you can, you essentially get programmed in like two ways, something traumatic happens or something abrupt happens. Um, let me back up. I don't even want to say traumatic because you can have like an abrupt, ex you can have an experience and it could even be good that can program you. So you can have an experience that makes an immediate shift in how you behave forever going forward or it's through repetition. And most of our learning happens through repetition. Like most of the day-to-day -day things that we've learned, our habits and things like that, they are formed in rep through repetition. And so we see this, of course, in school, right? So I think everybody gets that, the process of um, repetition in school. So this weekend, this brings me up to what happened this weekend. So this weekend, I was asked about my I am statements. Like, what are my I am statements? And one, I thought it was a wildly um, great question because oftentimes we talk a lot at this point about 
affirmations, which are I am statements, right? What are we affirming in our lives? And we can affirm the negative, we can affirm the positive, but ultimately, um, an I am statement is what am I affirming in my life? And so, you know, some of the negatives, like I will just, I'm just going to share my own negatives. Like I had a friend of mine just call me out recently about this because I kept saying like, oh, well, you know, I'm fatter than I want to be. And at some point he was like, so when are you going to stop saying that about yourself? And I was like, oh, all right. Now I need to create an I am statement in the positive. So we regularly are programming ourselves um, all the time, right? So that in that space where we are consistently saying, I am, I am, I am. One of the things that frustrates me the most about this is when we affirm just like this, who I am. I always act like this, this is just who I am. And it, it doesn't take into account literally just how adaptable we actually are. And so you can change the, this is just how I am by having a positive traumatic, uh, a positive experience, a traumatic experience or through repetition. So I try to make sure that when we're discussing affirmations, that we really actually think through how affirmations can be beneficial to us beyond these like positive statements, right? Because honestly, positive statements really don't do that much unless there are some things that are backed by them. So um, I base I am statements solely on deficiencies. And one of the things that I do not do is create 101 affirmations. I've had people talk about like go into classes and say that you need to create 101 affirmations. At some point, they're repetitive. They don't necessarily make sense for where you are. They might already be affirming something that you don't really have a problem with. I do not make I am statements like that at all. I do not make affirmations in that way at all. The the way that I have learned through my experience to actually create um I am statements or affirmations that actually work for your life in particular, as we think about how we head into the new year, it's about to be 2023 in just a couple of weeks. How are you going to be different? How are you going to show up differently in 2023, right? Is by changing how you behave and changing how you think. Every time you make an evolution, you are going to change how you behave and change how you think. We all know that saying, um, what is it? Insanity is when you do something over and over again, but expect different results. So when I hear somebody say, this is just who I am. This is just how I am. I am, I am, I am, I am this way. You are not even allowing your brain to open itself up to the possibility to change how you behave and change how you think. And that's the only way to level up because who you are in order for you to take, drive your income up to six figures is great. Once you hit six figures, who you need to be in order to drive up to multiple six figures, new person, who you need to be in order to drive your, your income up to seven figures, new person. I got a friend right now who's on the verge of hitting eight figures. And he is like, oh my God, like the person I have to be in order to hit eight figures is not the person I was at all when I hit seven figures. So you have to be constantly in this process of assessing who you are and not just being comfortable with who you are. You should, um, you should appreciate who you are. You should love who you are. You should be absolutely okay with needing to grow into the next version of you. That means you have to change how you think. That means you have to change your behavior. And if you are doing I am statements or affirmations just as positive statements, you are not going to change your behavior and you are not going to change your mindset. So I don't do like, let's write 101 affirmations. I don't do, let's put 30. I don't even do, let's do 10. So my list grows, but I always start off the year. I start off every year with three affirmations based on deficiencies that I want to change about myself. And we have to be okay that we have deficiencies. Deficiencies does not make you less lovable. It does not make you less worthy. It is just a place that you want to get better. I probably shouldn't walk around saying I'm fatter than I want to be. I probably shouldn't do that. That's a deficiency. I probably should fix that for myself, right? So like, for example, as I walk into the new year, since this was just pointed out to me very recently uh, in a very real come to Jesus conversation, then one of my affirmations for this year is I am at my healthy weight. I am at my healthy weight. So one, I'm doing two things. One is through repetition, I am going to be repeating that to myself every day. And also I will be repeating it to myself every time I come across a fat treat that I want to have. Um, and it's not that I don't want to be able to eat 
things that I like to eat, but I do want to be at a healthy weight. That matters to me. So that affirmation has to be something that I continue to say over and over and over again. So my, so I pick three to four things that I'm fixing, that I'm adjusting, that I'm aligning, right? Um, that are either actions or mindsets or both. Actions or mindsets or both. It's not just going to be one or the other. Most of the time it's going to be both. Most of the time it's going to be both. And I say that because sometimes you have things that you don't say out loud, but you just think to yourself and you know what those things are. Like you have things that you say to yourself. One of the things that um, I've had to have conversations with, uh, with one of my friends is they will say, I'm so stupid. And like, I don't think that they are like, they haven't keyed in right until I said, Hey, like you say that often, I'm so stupid. So somewhere in your mind, you repeat that over and over to yourself. There are things that we repeat mentally that we don't all, all the time say outside, or that maybe we let slip, like how she does. It's very like casual, like, Oh, I'm so stupid. Um, so, but think about what's happening in your mindset as well, right? But most of the time it's going to be actions and mindsets. And then you're looking at how you're going to course correct over time, which is why for me at the top of the year is a great time for me to set it because it gives me 365 days of repeating this to myself and um, that and making that course correction over time. But after you pick those three to five things that you want to work on, where do you start aligning with your action? And that's the number one place where positive affirmations do not work unless they are aligned to the action that is going to change that. And most of the time, that action is going to have to be forced and is going to have to be pretend initially, the pretend, as you build up, right? And so you have to behave like the person that you want to become even before you become that person even before you fully have become that person. So for example, um, when I'm looking at, okay, I am at my healthy weight. The question, and this right here is the, so if you're writing anything down, this is the key question to ask yourself after you have created these three to four affirmations. You need to ask yourself, what would a person fill in the blank with your affirmation do? What would they do? Not what would Jesus do? What would this person do? So for me, what would a person at their healthy weight do in this moment? What would a healthy person, I mean, what would a person at their healthy weight do at this Christmas party that has a whole table full of desserts? What would a person at their healthy weight do when it's time to go to the gym? What would a healthy person, what would a person at their healthy weight do when they're being presented with pasta and pizza and nachos and ice cream. All the things that I love. But how do you take that positive affirmation and ask yourself repeatedly in the moment that it is needed? What would fill in the blank affirmation? What would this person do? Because at some point, as you continue to drive this home and you continue to adjust your behaviors little bit by little bit by little bit, that question becomes less necessary because you are that person now, but you're not that person today. So you have to ask yourself, what would that person do? So you can model your behavior after that person. We know what that looks like typically because when we recognize a deficiency in ourselves, a lot of times it's because we've seen someone else modeling how it is that we would like to be. So we see that person, we're like, yeah, I like that attribute. And sometimes it's not conscious, you know, it's not like you have to be fangirling or fanboying over somebody, but you just recognize, like, I like this person's physique. I like this, like this person travels the way I want to travel. This person, like they are um, financially knowledgeable, like I want to be financially knowledgeable. This person, like I'm a coach, they're a coach, they are killing it. I, I'd like to coach like how they coach. I like what they're doing. I like how they're improving. This person's business is on point. Man, that person who just made it into the C-suite, I see how they how they move. I like to move like that. So it don't have to be like this weird, you know, like you're not being weird. You're just seeing something that resonates with you and you know you're not there. 
So that is the basis of you having the question of, well, what would this person do? It don't have to be that specific person. Like, I want to really be clear about that. I don't want to, I want to beat a dead horse, but I do really want to be clear. It's not about like a person. It's about a model behavior that you can see that helps you make a decision in the moment about what is it you want to do. So as you start to think about going into 2023 and you start thinking about the type of life that you are ready for your next level whatever that looks like everybody has a next space that they want to move to as you start thinking about that you want to one assess your deficiencies pick three to four that you want to work on for the next year create the uh, the affirmative statement for those things right what is the new behavior what is the new mindset and then the one thing you got to keep rocking with you is what would a person that looks like this do in this moment? I don't know who just came off of mute, but let me put you back on mute for a second. Okay. So, um, that is what I have for you for today, but I want to open it up. Like, let's talk about it, right? Oh, well, actually... I'm gonna give you all homework after we have this Q&A. Y'all know I'm, I'm, I'm gonna drop some homework, but I wanna open it up. Like, what are your thoughts on this? Like, how does, is this different from the way that you've seen affirmations in the past or heard of affirmations? Like, have you used affirmations and you felt like they have or haven't helped? I wanna open it up to, um, I'm gonna open up the floor. What thoughts do you have? I like the um, taking the deficiency mindset, right? Because um, typically when I look at strength finders, like, hey, focus on the good, focus on the good. But you're like, you know, I have these deficiencies that I need to focus on uh, to make my good better. Uh, so in taking that deficiency mindset, creating a positive affirmation around it is, is unique to me. And I definitely want to use that going forward. Awesome. Yeah, I do think at times that we um, we do struggle to like just be upfront about what our deficiencies are. Right. And it is not like it's not to focus in on the deficiencies. It's not for you to like go around beating yourself up, but it is for you to have that real pillow talk with yourself and be like, well, this is an area I can improve. And then if you don't acknowledge it, how do you actually take actionable steps to improve it? And I, and I see these things are the types of things that I start to see like over and over and over again, you know, as I coach and even before I open opened up the consulting company, just the work that I saw, you know, inside the Black Business Initiative where, you know, people want to make changes, but they don't even want to acknowledge what they don't do well. Um, or if they do, they acknowledge it in this kind of, you know, flippant, like, I don't do that. So therefore, I'm just, it's not what I do. I'm not like that. That's not who I am. So then they never really work on the area of self-improvement. So that's what's up. Matthew, were you saying something? Because I think you were muted. And you are still muted. You muted me. Anyway, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, in, in recent days, I found out something about myself that would qualify as a deficiency. I am afraid to fail. And that usually minimizes the risk that I take in new ventures and even old ones. Um, I've I just come to realize that about myself, how that, like it'll be a, a million dollar deal on the table and I'm worried about all the liabilities to the point where sometimes I talk myself out of things that would actually put me on the level I want to be on. So that is something that I'm not just embracing that for the new year, because I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. It's just something you say coming up on the year and then when you're coming up on the next year, here you go saying it again. It's probably even worse. So I always, if I want to start on something, I start right then. Um, okay. So I'm just, right now, I'm taking a different approach to opportunities that I've probably been afforded. And I'm just, uh, I'm just going to roll with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm so like, I'm what's the affirmation to that? I'm what's the affirmative to being, <laughs> that's not an affirmation. <laughs> what's the, <laughs> what is the affirmative to be fear of failure? I am not scared to fail. So that's interesting that you would say it in that way. And I'm glad that you said it that way. So let me, let, let's rework this a little bit. 
So our brains don't hear the negative. So you can't tell yourself not to do something because it will just do that, right? So like, for example, if I say, don't think about an elephant, then you see an elephant. Like you can picture an elephant. You've thought about an elephant. Your brains don't work in the not. So when you create an affirmative statement, it needs to be in the positive. So for example, you could say, um, I fail forward or um, I learn from failure or so what about um, I am not going to succeed <laughs> does it work that way I like uh <laughs> I I learn or I learn new opportunities from each failure exactly something like that <laughs> because you have to it's about giving yourself permission to fail right because all the success people talk about how they either fail up right? The ladder to success is not always linear. So it's like, okay, I'm going to take it's these never failures linear. that never are never going never to linear. happen. Right. So exactly. take that knot out. Yeah, take that knot out. So you need to be thinking about what it is that you are working towards the mindset, the mindset, because even though your brain, so for example, you, you're, I get what you're saying when you said, I'm not going to succeed. Right. So then what you're really saying is I, going to succeed but it, it also doesn't work that way like that is a constant that's that is programming yourself to not succeed right when you're creating an affirmative statement you need to be creating it in the affirmative so you're create what you want to create is um i succeed at what i do but what you're combating is not necessarily an issue around success you're combating an issue with the way you see failure so you want to create affirmative statement around the way that you see failure like at the re and the, the reality of it is you can go after all the opportunities and you will likely fail at some of them like because success is not linear right and so you will likely fail at them the what the what happens is is that how do you buffer and and create or program yourself so that when you fail at something, you can see the failure in a way that helps you to keep moving forward, right? Because oftentimes people will fail and then they never try again. They messed up something and then they'd be like, no, nah, I ain't doing that because the way they see failure. So you've identified this place where you see that failure doesn't allow you to take the risk that you need to take in order for you to move to your next level. Then how do you create that in the affirmative so that you can both take that risk and when you come across the opportunity or the time that you fail, that you see it as an opportunity to learn, that you see it as a stepping stone forward, that you see it as the opportunity for you to um, you know, take that in, recalibrate some things and keep moving i mean how do you then see failure so that you don't stop in your tracks when it, when you need it because right now you're avoiding failure by staying in your comfort zone you're going to break out your comfort zone what's the affirmative so that when you meet failure you can still work through it does that make sense i'm going to break out my comfort zone we're going to work on that i'm going to send you some <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks because i'm clearly not like wait what okay that's okay um, we're gonna work on that we're gonna get you an amazing affirmative statement and that you are gonna be able to work through 2023 you're gonna be able to start now working through 2023 wait that's what we're gonna do <laughs> thank you appreciate it of course <laughs> any other thoughts I see some of y'all are just joining us. So I, I'll give us a quick recap. We've been talking today about affirmations, but more so how to actually make affirmations um, successful, right? And so how do we move affirmations beyond positive statements and, in, and moving affirmations into a space where they are actionable and where they help us meet certain deficiencies. So um, that's kind of a recap, but there will be a replay and you can catch the full scope of what we just talked about. But uh, let me get back to open it up. Before I give you all homework, I want to make sure, did I, are there any other thoughts? What questions do you have? I have a question, uh, Jace. Uh -huh. It's Sydney. How are you? Hey, Sydney. Good, how are you? <laughs> Good. Um, you know, I was thinking, what if some people, I love like that notion of, you know, doing that off of knowing your deficiencies, but what if people don't know their deficiencies? 
Ooh, that's a good one. So a few weeks ago, we talked about pillow talk. Um, this is like some serious come to Jesus moments, right? Like this is you and you having a conversation about yourself. And what I will say is that, um, oftentimes in this space where you are looking at how do you determine what your deficiencies are? And again, this is not like, you're not looking to tear yourself down, right? You're really just looking for the spaces in which you want to improve, but more so like, how do you align your improvement to the goals in the life that you really want to live? Like somewhere in here, you have some idea or thought about how you want to live. But if you don't have an idea or thought about how you want to live, that is also an opportunity for you to really get quiet with yourself. So the first thing that I always recommend is actually getting quiet with yourself, like spending time to sit down and start thinking. When you allow yourself to really get quiet, you may recognize certain things. Like one is you may recognize that there are things that have been told to you over and over again, and you've shrugged them off. So those repeating messages where somebody says, well, you always do this and you shrug that person off. Someone else says, well, you always do this and you shrug that person off. That's why I paused. I mean, I muted you, Matt, because you got noise going on in the background. You're good though. Um, yeah, you, <laughs> we can hear all that rustling around. Now I don't hear what you're saying. And the way that you're moving those fingers, I feel like I shouldn't hear what you're saying. <laughs> um, but um, so, so Cindy, I, when, what, what I want to convey in that is you have to spend time actually getting quiet with yourself to start assessing where some of those deficiencies are. And so sometimes that comes through repeating messages, but the other thing too can be where you just see space for improvement um, and where you want to improve going into your next, you know, phase. And one, in one of my coaching groups, um, that I'm a part of one of the things that we were challenged with this year is what is a skill that you want to grow? Well, in order for me to think about a skill that I want to improve on, I probably have to recognize that there's a skill that, that needs improvement. And so that skill can be, any number of things um, based off of whatever it is that I want to improve. And I can create a positive affirmation that affirms that I am good in this skill. And then I can actually go about the work of learning that skill. Um, and I'll give you like, for example, one of the, the examples that I used at the um, brunch this past weekend was I am supported. So I have been feeling unsupported based on um, several things that I have been going through throughout the year. I had had some um, relationships that had kind of gone up in smoke despite my best efforts of really trying to hold on to them. I just had things that were happening for me that made me really feel unsupported. And when I recognized that I made an affirmation in the middle of the year, so I added onto my list, which I'll throw that in there. Like I do add onto my list as the year goes on. So I start off with my first three, three to four, um, I usually start off with three. That's just me, but I do add on if I recognize things. So in the middle of the year, I added a new affirmation. I am supported because I was recognizing that I was really feeling this way. And I kept saying like, that's not true. And I started going back and recognizing where I had received support throughout the years. And I said, it's just not true. Like, however I'm feeling, I need to break out of this, out of how I'm feeling. So one of my affirmations that I started in the middle of the year is I am supported. But that I wouldn't necessarily call that like a deficiency, but it was a deficient mindset that I had at that time. And so I needed to adjust and change that mindset. And then for me, I tied that into my gratitudes. So I would be certain that at least once a week, I was creating one of one gratitude of where I had been supported that week because I needed to see it. So it, it really like the way that this works is it has to align and tie into an action. If it doesn't tie into an action, then you're just saying something something that you don't have any application for, right? So like you can teach the kids ABCs all day long. You're going to teach it through repetition. We're going to say our ABCs over and over again. Then you teach kids sounds, but until you apply those sounds, right, with those letters to words so that kids can start reading, then we're just, it's just nothing. It's nothingness. It's a letter. It's a sound. It doesn't mean anything until you apply it to the word. So how do you take something that you see a mindset, an action, a way you want to be, a way that you're not currently being, a way you want to change, shift, align. How do you take that, create the statement that affirms that thing 
and then create the action that backs it up. There's no action that I'm supported. There's a recognition that I'm supported. So I started recognizing that every week in my gratitudes, right? So um, I think this is the first time that I've seen you on the call, Sydney, but uh, a few weeks ago, I don't remember which week, so all of them was a few weeks ago as far as I'm concerned, but a few weeks ago, I talked about the space of gratitude, and I talked about me, you know, keeping a gratitude journal and why gratitude is so important um, in, in how you evolve and grow as a person. So as one of my gratitudes, when I recognize that I didn't feel supported, that was my action. My action was to then consistently make sure that I acknowledged an area of support every week. So does that answer your question, like how you can begin to assess and see when something might not be in alignment? Absolutely. That That is very, all of that. That's good. That's good. Awesome. Who else? Other thoughts, questions? Oh, Jay dropped her. Okay, Jay, go ahead. I, I am patient with myself and others. I am intentional with my time. That's a huge win. And then you're still thinking on the third one. Okay, okay. Yes. <laughs> yep. The third Both one's gonna be is the third one's gonna have to have something to do with my money mindset or an abundance and prosperity mindset. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how I want to word that, but. Uh, yeah. yeah, just thinking more more lines, more along the lines of abundance versus scarcity. But clearly I'm not gonna put the word scarcity in my my affirmation. <laughs> right. I just wanna yeah, I wanna think about how I should um incorporate abundance and prosperity and actually generating wealth um into my third one. Okay. Yep. I'll work with you on that. All right. So if there are other thoughts as I go, um, let me know. I'm just going to give y'all your homework and make my little couple quick announcements and I'm going to release y'all for the rest of your day. So here's your homework. Jade has already started on hers. It is to write three to four um, affirmations, right? And so you want to think about that from the space of where you may be deficient, where you might see that you need to improve. Um, you know, and like I said, sometimes people are going to point some of these things out to you. So if you spend some time being quiet, you may find areas that really matter to you that can help you improve. So you want to take those affirmations um, and write them down and really, um, really like Matthew said, you ain't got to wait for January 1. You can get started today, right? You can get started the, in put, putting those affirmations in your morning routine. And the reason, another reason why I like to keep them small is because you really can only focus on a couple of areas of improvement at a time. There's always going to be things you want to improve about yourself, but it helps that way when you're only thinking about a couple that you can actually remember them because in the moment, like you can say your affirmations as a part of your morning routine or your evening routine um, before you start your day, before you go to sleep. But really what helps in that space is in the moment that you need an affirmation, in the moment that you need that, that you can divert back to that. Say your affirmation and then ask the question, what would somebody that looks like said affirmation, right? I'm gonna use Jade's one because she has it in here. What would somebody who is patient with themselves do in this situation? somebody is working your nerves, I am patient with myself and others. What would somebody who has patience do in this scenario, right? That question is going to be the question that helps you guide your actions to align with what you're teaching and reprogramming in your mind. Shauna said, everything I will, everything I will comes to me. I am loving, kind, and patient. I have the ability to rest in stillness. Yes, I like that. So, um, so that is your homework. So I want you to really work on that and focus on that for the new year and then make sure that you commit to memory that question, put it in your phone, put that um, question somewhere so that you can constantly go back and recall on that question. That's going to help you change your behavior so that you can grow to become that person. So um, before I let y'all go, I will throw out here, um, we had our first Mimosas and Manifestations brunch. It was amazing. I want to thank everybody that came out. I had such a good time. And our next one is going to be in Miami. So you don't have to live in Miami if you want to just have a reason to come to Miami, head on out there. But the next one will be in Miami, um, February the 18th. 
So uh, I'll be putting out more information, things like that. So that you, I mean, you can, Miami, you can stay a whole lot of places, but I'll be putting out like the, some hotels that you can stay at, things like that. Come on out, come on out and have a good time. Um, and then come and brunch with us. Um, my other request is that if this call is helpful, that you would share it with some other folks so that we can have more folks on the call. I hope that what I am um, presenting out here um, for you is useful and helpful. And I would love to continue to grow the call we have different people on every week, but we also have roughly around the same, like somewhere in between like eight to 11, 12 people um, on the high end. But I would love to see more people join the call if the call is helpful. So I'm going to ask that you share it out. And the last thing that I will leave you with, um, Dave, you just jumped on and we actually are wrapping up. So that's my apologies, but the replay will be available. I'll drop it in the group. Um, and thank you for joining. My last thing that I'll leave you with is the um, Excuse Me While I Live Intentionally program is officially up and running. I'm very excited. Um, we have a group that is growing in numbers. If you are interested in learning more about that program, that program is going to help you get very clear on how you want to live intentionally, help you create the game plan in order for you to get there and help you build the habits that support that life lifestyle going forward. If you are interested in learning more about work-life integration strategies and how to live intentionally, you can get in contact with me and I will tell you more about that program. But it is officially up and running, y'all. So we out here. We're doing the work. All right. So um, no, don't worry about it. If you missed it, I'm going to shoot the replay out. I will do that. All right. So this has been another high performance at high noon call, y'all. I appreciate you joining with me today. And I will look to see you next Wednesday. Same time, noon, Mountain Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. All right.